Okay, the first thing you tackle in this chapter is uh, something you've actually looked at before, uh, which is differential equations. We had that term come up before. All a differential equation is is an equation with a derivative in it, like this one. This has a derivative in it. It, it happens to say derivative equals negative 2x. And you've actually solved those things before, right? Or this one down here, derivative equals x. To solve it means to say what is the function or what's the set of all possible functions that it could be, right? And for these, there's not too much of a trick to it because it just says derivative equals this, and then you can just kind of directly write the function, right? Like if the first one here or this, this thing here says uh, derivative equals x, what could that function be? Half x squared, right? Split it, because it could be any plus any constant there, so plus c, right? So that's the, that's the solution to that differential equation. Now, we're going to get more complicated differential equations eventually, and we're going to get things that have x's and y's over here. And, uh, and you're going to get some that you can't actually solve analytically. But for now, that's a good starting point. All right, so the solution, as it says up here, to solve a differential equation means to find all functions or relations, it might not be a function, that satisfy that equation, right? So find all functions where the derivative is equal to the, to the x value. That's what that's saying. If you, take any, um, if you take any parabola that looks like that, half x squared, the derivative is equal to whatever the x coordinate is. The slope of the curve is whatever the x value is, okay? Now, if you wanted to figure out what this is, you need one more piece of information. If you want to actually figure out what that constant is, you need to know at least one thing. This, if you drew graphs of this, what this is saying is, um, actually, I don't know why I won't. Let me uh, just, so if we, if we graph something here, if we graph that y equals 0.5x squared, plus, now I should have actually put, I'll put plus one there for now, I should have made it. Let's put a slider thing in here first. Let's actually call it capital C just so we can make it that and then we'll go back here and we'll make this into that, okay? So we have this parabola here that uh, we'll make it a little more visible first. And then if you change the value of that, of this constant here, if you slide this back and forth, that constant just means it's going up or down, right? So it's some arbitrary constant, but anywhere you go on there, the slope of the thing is equal to the x value. That's what we started with, right? If you think about it here, so we'll stop anywhere here. Okay, the slope is equal to the x value. Uh, I'm going to stop right in there, not that it matters, but if you go to this point at 1 here, the slope's 1. If you go to 2, the slope's 2, right? The slope is whatever the x value is. At 0, the slope is 0. That's what that original differential equation said, okay? The original differential equation said that the slope is equal to the x value. So that's something important to remember when you think about differential equations. Connect it with the slope of things. If you wanted something specific here, if you wanted to know what specific curve that was, well, you'd need to know some a little bit more information, at least one more piece of information. Um, if you have um, a value of a specific point, okay, then actually you call it an initial value problem because you're given some initial condition, right? You're given some condition to follow here. So if it said something like solve that differential equation or the one that we had, but you're given a specific point, like if we knew that this one, let's go back up here and let's say we knew that this one passed through zero, not zero. What if it passed through um, two, three? Okay, if it passed through two, three here, let's go back to this. So if we had this point right here, two, three. So if it passed through that point, um, there's, a, there's a certain value of C that's going to make it so it passes through that point. There's a whole bunch of curves that have, whoops, let's not put another point on there. Um, there's a whole bunch of curves that satisfy that differential equation, but there's only one that passes through that point. So if I stop right there, right, if this is plus one, then it satisfies that condition that it has to pass through that point. So if you're given a point on the curve, then there's one specific 
one specific thing. Now you can find that algebraically by just subbing the numbers in, right? If you took those two things and you subbed them in here for x and y, you could work out what c is. So that's called an initial value problem. If you're wanting to know the words, what they mean. You've had these things before too, right? Find the function that has this as its derivative and passes through this point. You've had those before. They just haven't been called initial value problems, right? If it's presented as an initial value problem, here's a differential equation. Here's an initial condition. It's the same as things you've already done before, right? This second one here um, involving a trig function, what's the solution to, what's the solution to that? Sure. So if you're going to solve this one, right now we're kind of just doing it as thinking, well, do we really know, you know, what's a function that has that as its derivative? What's a function that has that as its derivative? Negative cos x, right? We're not doing it as anything else other than just knowing, you know, right now all we can do if we have, if it says derivative equals something, we can write what the original function is just by kind of working backwards. So this is the solution if it just said solve that differential equation. But if you know that f of 0 is 1, you can use that to figure out what c is, right? So we could do the same as we did before is graph the thing and look what it has to be. Or let's, uh, let's solve it first so you can sub in this point 0, 1. Right? So if you replace each of those things and you make it one here negative cos of zero what's uh, what's cosine of zero cosine of zero is one so we got negative one plus this equals one right so we got c equals two so solving that initial value problem or solving this differential equation given this there's one specific curve, and it is y equals negative cos x plus 2. Okay, that's the solution. y equals negative cos x plus 2. So if you, if you go back here, let's change this so, it, so we graph that. So we'll change this thing to what we had. Um, well, I'll leave it as, I'll leave it as negative cos x. I'll leave it as the c value right now and then we can we can see why it why it works. So if I slide this thing up and down here right there's there's a lot of different curves it could be. It could be any constant on the end there but there's only one that's going to be what did I say it was? 0, 1. Is that right? So there's only one curve that passes through there so if I slip this up and so it passed through that point it's got to be right, a little too touchy here. There we go. It's got to be that, right? And that's, so that's the, that's the one that we had there, which is negative cos x plus 2. Okay, so that's, you know, reflected and then up to. That's the specific solution that passes through that point. That's solving differential equations, whether you have an initial condition or not. Okay. Any questions about that?